that waited too late. The man that waited too late. Open your Bible to Hebrews chapter number 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Let me show you the sad story of a man by the name of Esau whom prayed, but he prayed too late. And I'm going to tell you this morning, you can fool right around and fool right around and fool right around till you mix. And then you ain't never going to have another one. Hebrews chapter 12. I feel like the Lord wanted me to warn somebody here this morning. And you can be saved right here in this service. Hebrews chapter number 12. I want you to look with me, if you will, at verse 16. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person. What's profane? Like profanity, like cussing. Profane person. As Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. Though he, and he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with years. Before I bring the message this morning, you understand that God gives you so many chances to be saved. We have a brand new baby here this morning. Brand new. First time ever being here. Where's it? Is it in here? Rachel, you got it? Stand up and show the brand new little baby boy. Isn't that son? First time he's ever been here. He was born just the other day. Pray for his daddy. Amen. Jonathan. All right. Now that little baby, as it grows up, is going to have a chance to say yes to God or no to God. You in here, some of you are grown this morning, and you're having your chance today to say yes to God or no to God. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, everybody in this room this morning is going to say, Yes, Lord, or you're going to say, No, Lord. Every time you come to church, you're forced into it. You don't even have a choice. You're going to say, Yes, Lord, I'm going to do right, or No, Lord, I'm going to do what I want to do. Everybody in here is going to make that choice. Now, I'm going to tell you about a man this morning that waited too late. Many times, people like Esau have opportunity for a blessing and pass it up and lose it. This story happened nearly 4,000 years ago. Yet we still tell about it today. Where Esau, you know the story. I, I don't have time to tell you all of it. But he deceived his father and sold his... Uh, his brother deceived his father and he sold his birthright. And the birthright in the Old Testament meant you got a double portion of the father's inheritance. It meant you were standing in line of the Messiah who was to come. And it meant that you exercised priestly rights in the family. You was the, you was the, the head man in the family. That's what the birthright meant. And he sold it for that pottage and he lost it. And then he wanted to pray and have another chance, but it was too late. Now, i got some bad news for you this morning. There's people who sat in church last Sunday morning just like you're sitting. Just like you're sitting. Dressed just like you're dressed. Feeling just like you feel. Listen, just like you're listening. There's people that sat in church last Sunday morning that are in hell right now. And that means that anybody in here who's not saved could be in hell screaming and burning in hell fire by this time tomorrow. And you could miss your last chance to be saved today. You kids listen? You mamas and daddies listen? You could miss your last chance to be saved. You say, I've never been here before, and you're one of them hellfire and brimstone preachers. Yes, I am, and I don't make no apologies for it. Jesus Christ was a hellfire preacher, and if you go to a church where the preacher don't preach on hellfire, they ought to run him out of town. He is a crook that won't, knows about hell and won't tell somebody. If there ain't no hell, you don't need a preacher. And if there is one and he don't tell you about it, you need to get rid of him. Amen? Yes, sir. I don't like to talk about it, but the Bible says there is one. You know, as we look at these stories this morning, we notice he despised his opportunity and he put it off one time too many. The Bible is full of warnings that emphasize today. The Bible said, Behold, today is the day of salvation. Now is accepted time. The Bible said in Isaiah 50, verse 6 and 7, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon Him while He is near. 
Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he'll have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. The Bible said in Proverbs 7 and verse 1, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Let me tell you something, big boy. Let me tell you something. You better not sit here this morning and say, Nobody's going to tell me how to live. You better not brag what you're going to do tomorrow, because you don't know. You're liable to be in the hospital in the, by this time tomorrow morning with tubes running down your throat and on a life support machine, not even in your right mind, be able to pray. You're liable to be in a funeral home this time tomorrow. I might be too. I'm not no fool. I know if we're not bigger than I am. And God's bigger. And God's greater. And you'll mess around and wait too late if you're not careful. Are you right with God this morning? If you know if you died right now, you'd go to heaven when you die. I'm going to tell you something right now. You're, you're going to lose your chance one of these days. You're going to sit in church and sit in church and sit in church and sit in church and say no and no and no just like this and say no God, no God, no God. And one day you're going to sit there for your last time. I'm telling you this morning, there comes that last knock. There comes that last day. You'll hear that last sermon. You'll walk in church for your last time. There's coming a day when you're going to pass up your last chance. And it'll be too late for you if you ain't careful. Now, I'll tell you what you need to do. You need to make your way down here to this altar this morning. Get right with God this morning. Amen. This morning. I'm not talking about next week. I'm not talking about tomorrow. I'm talking about this morning. Now, putting things off is a terrible, terrible habit. It's a terrible, terrible sin. We don't like to. It's, it's common to our nature to put things off. We are, ourselves uh, realize this morning that when we put it off, we don't like to. I mean, I, like, I, I don't like to do things that I don't want to do. You know how it is when you got a doctor appointment and you'll put it off. When you, you're going to go to the dentist, I hate, I hate going to the dentist. I dread going to the dentist. I ain't been to the dentist in, I don't know, 15 years or something like that. And I ain't planning on going. Amen? You know, like that stuff. And, uh, but I'll tell you something. About, I don't like them needles sticking in my mouth. I don't like all that stuff. Some people are stupid enough to let them drive a needle through their tongue. I don't even want them to give me no, no needles. Right, but I dread it. I put it off till I have to go. I'll probably wake up one morning with a, where there's something happening and I'll have to go. But I, I don't want to do it. And that's the way getting right with God is. You put it off, 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 and, and sometimes you'll put it off too long. Sometimes you'll wait till your chance is over. Sometimes you'll wait till it's too late. There are people that wait till it's too late. God put this on my heart this morning. Don't wait till it's too late. This man waited till it was too late. It's going to be too late one day. You'll remember me saying this. There's people, I guarantee you, there's people in hell right now that can remember me pointing their, my finger at them and remember my face and saying, He told me, He told me, hell, and when God's forsaken me, oh God, oh God, and they can see my face, but they said no, and passed it up for the last time. I ain't joking. I'm not kidding this morning. Listen, there's a man called me from San Francisco at 3 o'clock in the morning. And he called me and said, Is this Danny Castle? And I said, Yes, it is. I can tell he's drunk by listening to his voice. He said, I'm in a bar in San Francisco. I said, um, I said, what's wrong? It was o'clock in the morning. So it was, Lord in mercy, what was it? 11, 12, 12 there, whatever it was. And I said, Do you realize it's 3 o'clock in the morning, man? He said, I'm going to tell you something, Danny. He said, I come and heard you preach before I moved out here. And he said, I'm sitting out here in a bar. I wound up dying with AIDS, matter of fact. And he told me, he told me on the phone that night, he said, every time I get sitting here at this bar, sitting in the bar in California drunk. And he said, when I close my eyes, all I can see is you standing up there pointing your finger, saying you need to get saved. And I thought, that's the power of the Holy Ghost for the Word of God. Here's a man out here and he's in California, lights flashing, music flashing, and all he can think of is a preacher pointing his finger saying you need to get right. What do you think they're thinking in hell this morning? What do you think they're thinking in hell? And it torments their mind and they scream and beg God for, a, for another change. And they say, oh God, God, I didn't listen. God, I didn't listen. Oh God, I want to die. But you can't die. And they say, God, I try to kill myself. And demons laughing at you and making fun of you and hissing. 
and big old monsters like you've seen in all these horror movies. Somebody you went and watched this week or you're going to watch in the next few weeks, that stuff's going to be real in hell as demons laugh at you and their big ugly red face and their tongue comes out and makes fun of you. I'm telling you, God's not joking. You better get right. You'll get your last chance to get right one of these days. You'll get your last chance to get right with God. In 1902, at 8 o'clock in the morning, Mount B, a volcano erupted. 30,000 people died that day in one of the worst natural disasters in the history of the world. And the saddest thing is them people had one week where they were told and, told and told and told and told and told to get out of town. They didn't do it. Now, that would have been bad if that thing would have just come in there and killed all them people and them not even had a warning. But it's worse. And you've been told and told and told. These people sitting in here this morning, your mama took you to church when you was little. You know what the Bible says. And you're so mean, you're so backslid, so full of the devil, that you'll sit right here this morning and say, I don't, I'm not ready. I don't, I'm not ready. You're mean, only God knocking your head off is going to get your attention. I'm going to tell you something today. You listen to me this morning. You can fool around well, it's too late. You can say, Brother Danny, that's awful hard preaching. Don't you... We need some hard preaching in this generation. Lord, how much little pussyfoot and standing up here with with, uh, with uh, panties on ain't going to help none like them wrestlers wear. Amen? Say amen right there. Brother, somebody needs to tell us there's a hell. There's a judgment. There's a God. You're going to face God at the judgment one day. And God hates sin. And God will save you this morning if you'll let Him. But you can wait till it's too late. You can wait till it's too late. You can and you will. If you're not, you're not careful, you'll wait till it's too late. Here's a man that waited till it was too late. You say, well, preacher, you just don't understand my situation. Yeah, right. I've heard people say, well, I just can't quit my sinning. Put, they'll put, put you in prison, you'll quit. One man said, I can't quit drinking. Put you in the hospital with your back break, broken, I bet you'll quit. You just don't want to. One man said, I can't cheap, quit my pot. Can't quit shooting up. Put you in the hospital a while and you'll quit. You say, I, quit. I can't quit cussing. Oh, yeah. Cut your tongue up. You'll quit. You just don't want to, you sorry thing. You just don't want to. You take God's wrath that He's given you. You walk on the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross for your sin. You spit in the face of God as He died on the cross for your sin. You leave God no choice but to judge you. I'm telling you, you can wait till it's too late. 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 I said you can wait till it's too late. And if you don't get right with God, you'll regret it one of these days. You know how foolish it is to wait? Up there in Pennsylvania, they, when that dam broke, they called it the Great Johnstown Flood. 3,700 people drowned when that dam broke. 3,700. And there's a man coming through there on a horse in the spring and said that dam's got a crack in it and it's going to break. And he listen. He come through in the summer and he said that dam has got a crack in it and it's going to break. And they didn't listen. He come through in the fall. He said, I'm telling you. And you know what people done? Let me tell you why people didn't run. They looked around and they didn't see nobody else running. They looked around and thought, well, ain't no big panic. My neighbors, everything's cool. We're all right. And brother, they, they got 3,700 people drowned because they didn't listen to the warning. That's the same thing that happened in Noah's day. God said, the flood's going to come. God said, the flood's going to come. Everybody said, well, I don't believe it. My neighbors don't believe it. Priests don't believe it. Rabbi, I don't believe it. Why should I believe it? And that's what we're doing today. You look around and say, well, nobody else seems to it all all tore up. And I'll tell you what's wrong with people in this country this morning. You know what's wrong with people in this country? God's been so dust for so long that we forget that He ain't a bit happy about our sins. He ain't a bit happy about it. Yes, God is love. Yes, God is love. Yes, if it wasn't for the love of God, I'd be in the love. But He hates my sins. And he hates your sins. Jesus, sin nailed Jesus to the cross. Man waited too late. I heard this story, and some of you have heard me tell it before, but I guess we've got 25 lost people in here this morning. And I have Christians pray, and I'm telling it for them. Listen. 
Years ago, a man that he had a dream. And he dreamed that the devil had all of his demons had a big meeting one day. Listen to me, kids. And the devil had a meeting with his demons. And the devil looked at him and he said, Hey, all you demons, he said, How are we going to mess up them people on earth, man? We've got to find out some way to take them all to hell. We've got to figure out something to mess them all up. And one little demon raised his hand and said, I know, devil, devil, let me go. Let me go up there. He said, All right, what's your plan? And that little demon said, I'm going to tell them the Bible ain't true. I'm going to tell them there ain't no hell. I'm going to tell them there ain't no heaven, no devil. I'm just going to tell them it's all a bunch of junk. Just live like you want to. And the devil said, uh, uh, uh. He said, that ain't going to work. He said, about anybody's got enough sense to know that there's a God. I mean, there can't be a creation without a creator. I talked to a boy on bus route. He said he didn't believe in God. And he thought he was so smart. He was about 14. And he said, he said well, where did God come from? Now, if a man asks a question that dumb, he can't even carry on a normal conversation. That's a dumb God come from. The definition of God is He's all powerful, all in this, and always has been. God didn't come from nowhere. If He'd have come from something, whatever He come from would have been God. He wouldn't be God. God always has been. God exists out of time. God don't operate in time. He created time. You know what He done before we got here? There wasn't no time. You know what? In heaven, there ain't going to be no time. It's just the way. Really, we sing when we've been there 10,000 years. That really is right. Time shall be no more. Ain't going to be no time. That's why a person can stay in hell forever, never, 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 never. There's no such thing as time. And so I told it, boy, I said, and he just said, oh. Like, I never thought of that. So the devil said, that ain't going to work. This ain't going to work. So the next demon raised his hand. He said, Mr. Devil. He said, Devil. He said, Devil. I know. Let me go up there. And the devil said, what's your plan? He said, I'm going to tell them that there is a God. He said, I'll tell them there is a God. But he said, he's just a force like Mother Nature. And it ain't the God of the battle. The devil said, no. Nah, that ain't going to work. He said, anybody with a half a brain knows there's something to the Bible. It's the only book in the world. Saw the birth of all the other books. It'll see the grave of the rest of them. Thy word is forever settled in heaven. He said, everybody knows there's something different about that book. That won't work. And the devil said, who else? And the next demon raised his hand. He said, Mr. Devil. He said, let me go up there. He said, know what I'll do. And the devil said, what? He said, I'm going to go up there and I'm going to tell them the Bible's true. He said, I'm going to tell them there's a heaven. He said, I'm even going to tell them there's a hell. And all the demons went, what? What? He said, I'm going to tell them there's a hell. He said, I'm even going to tell them the devil's real. I'm going to tell them the demons are real. And they said, oh my goodness, I can't believe this. And the demon said, but I'm just going to tell them just to wait a while. And there ain't no use in doing nothing about it today. The devil said, that'll work. The devil said, that will work. You go. And that little demon got the job. He's been up here on this planet ever since then in churches every Sunday morning right here. And he's sitting on your shoulder right now saying, Yep, he's right. Yep, everything he's saying is true. That's true. That's true. But don't do it today. And that's how he's got you. That's how he's got you. Some of y'all sitting here this morning, you came on a bus, or you drove, or you come because the bus worker invited you, and you think, Well, I might come back sometime. You don't know if you've got any time. This man waited too late. And I'd hate to go to hell from a pure of a Baptist church after hearing a preacher preach what I preach to you this morning. I don't like that. I don't like to do this. This ain't fun. This ain't fun telling people that there's a hell and they're going to burn forever. I don't like to do that. I wish that wasn't true. But if I'm true to my calling and I'm true to what this Bible says, I've got to warn you. Now you're going to have to do something about it. Because you can wait until you make it. Y'all come get us a song. I want everybody to stand by your head. Nobody's moving. Don't nobody move out of your seat.